Hey, parents, are you gearing up for back to school season and the stress of helping your child? Well, let's be honest, helping yourself get ready for this is already overwhelming and getting you thrown off track. We are here to help. On August 12th, I am dropping a brand new jam-packed, it's going to be 20, 25, 30 minutes webinar. I know you're busy, so we'll get right to it. And this webinar is going to be specifically for families with ADHD, sensory anxiety, spectrum challenges, where back to school season is way more stressful than it needs to be. Maybe it's just getting your child ready in the morning and making those transitions throughout the day at school, in and out of school is what overwhelms your child and causes them to struggle. Maybe it's their sitting down, doing homework, maintaining focus, maintaining concentration, keeping everything organized and turning it in on time. Whatever your child's struggles are, we are going to help with this webinar. We're going to teach you the neuroscience behind why they're struggling in the first place. And then we'll give you actionable, implementable, drug-free strategies to deploy this back to school season to help your child have a less chaotic, way smoother, way healthier, better transition to school and throughout school this entire school year. In this webinar, we're gonna get right to it. We're gonna serve your family in a major way Please hit the link in the show notes and get registered August 12th that goes live. We'll see you there. Just the way Xander carries himself is so different than what it was eight months ago. So if every child, every student had the opportunity to hold their head up a little higher and sit up a little bit straighter because there is also this piece of shame that comes with challenging behaviors and that's removed when you are able to treat it as an actual problem, not a choice, right? Like students would be available to learn and they'd be happier and more proud of themselves as well. Welcome to the Experience Miracles podcast, where we help parents find hope, answers, and drug-free help to overcome your child's chronic health challenges. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and I'll be sharing my experiences as both a dad and a doctor on every episode. I can take the latest science and neurology of healing and break it down in the most simple and relatable way possible. We'll take on the toughest topics and answer your biggest questions through interviews with other amazing parents and leading experts, leaving you with practical action steps that you can take to help your child heal and thrive. It's time to expect and experience miracles. Let's get started. All right, parents, welcome to another awesome episode of the Experience Miracles podcast. We do three different types. I didn't even really explain this to her yet. I'm just going to have her go through this live with me. We do three types of episodes. Um, Every third or so episode, it's me and I dive deep into autism or vagus nerve. So they just hear from me. And there's a parent and professional aspect on that, being a perfect storm dad myself. And then others are interviews. And these two, one kind of interview is other parents. The other kind of interview is other professionals. And most every professional we have interviewed is a parent as well, but not every time a parent who has gone through some of this perfect storm, nervous system dysregulation, really exhausting, frustrating, um, tough stuff. And it tends to, Teresa, our beautiful, amazing guest today, it tends to get more stressful the more we know about it. And so if you can let our audience know, we're going to start with your story, my friend. What is your educational, professional background? Start with that and then roll right into the struggle part of the story with your two beautiful boys, Xander and Zeke. Certainly. So I was a school social worker and I'm a school social worker Mm -hmm. by training. Um, I primarily worked with students with significant social, emotional and behavioral challenges, often students with diagnoses um, such as autism. Within that, I really became an expert, I would say, in behavior, right? So I then was a behavior specialist for a school district for many years. Um, Most recently now, I am a school administrator, and I am an administrator that oversees a therapeutic day school, an alternative high school for high school age students, again, with the primary challenges of social, emotional, and behavioral. Um, With that... I started to see some challenges with my oldest son, Xander, and my instinct, right, what I know best yeah. is to apply those um, behavior modification strategies and do what I do best based on my background. Um, quickly realized I needed something more. Within that, 
needed something more. Is what's so hard I find as a parent is to which one are we going to lead with? Our brain, you know, and our thoughts, and then our heart will sometimes race to the front, and we get into that emotions that when our kiddos are having behavior challenges. Now, the beautiful thing about your training is you knew how to handle this. I guess I'll use the word professionally. And so, where was that layer for you, where you started to really recognize, son of a gun, these behavioral modifications that I know to do, something more is going on, something deeper is going on. Was there a moment in time? Was there a certain episode? Was there something that kind of triggered that deep parent gut where you're like, man, this is this is more than we're able to modify from, I guess we'll call it here, like an outside in approach, which we love, we support. I mean, we champion 24 seven, that component of it, but often there is a deeper layer of stress. When did you know? So there was a couple of things um, with Xander in particular, like he knows every self-regulation strategy possible. Um, a lot of the feedback that I got from his teachers was how bright of a boy he is and how once he's calm, he knows the right thing to say and do. And it's because he does. Um, he can tell you any day of the week, yeah. like a small problem, a small reaction, a big problem, a big reaction, but he wasn't applying it. Um, and actually in December of this past year, I went to his parent teacher conferences and his teacher did not know what I do for a living, what my background was. And she gave me like a referral for understanding the state no of way. Illinois's social emotional learning standards and I was like I could read these standards oh. like backwards oh. up and down front to back I, I know what to do I'm already doing it um, and you know divine timing I was already following um, a staff or a, a patient advocate care yeah. advocate from PwC on Instagram um, and it seriously was later that night that one of the reels she shared was a a patient there that really had some of the yep. similar challenges to Xander. Um, and and on, I took the rest. I was going to say, <laughs> and on down the road you went. Okay, I love that. And I want to yes. I want to continue to walk through this map because when, when we're walking down the road to finding hope answers and drug-free help for our kiddos, we're walking down the road. It's us as parents, right? Um, hopefully our five and six-year-olds aren't the ones on Instagram finding the reel <laughs> and saying, you know what? I'd like to get we're adjusted. Yeah, it. totally, right? <laughs> so it is us that is the catalyst, that is the researcher, you know, and we got to, that, that road needs to be traveled with our heart and our head to make this decision. And I know you and John probably then probably from, let's just go there. So from Instagram and, and knowing, you know, other folks that had gotten care and seeing, you know, those different testimonials that were a lot like Xander, what was your next step? Cause you are so well educated. Um, was, I, let me just ask it this way, Teresa, was that important? Did you, did you nerd out a little bit and need to read about subluxation and the nervous system? What was your next step in your investigation process um, before calling PwC? Yeah, I read quite a bit um, on your website. Um, I actually am going to reference a previous uh, podcast you did with Tracy when oh, she yeah. read about the team before yeah. like actual perfect storm. And I certainly was the opposite of like, I need to know the evidence yep. behind this, the science behind this, um, and read a great deal surrounding just what the perfect storm is, what the pediatric experience is, right? Like, and that's what gave Love. me some concrete answers of yep. like, okay, let's take this risk. Yeah. Um, I need a, a little bit of fact. Oh, first. goodness. <laughs> and I was, I was hoping you would say that because you and I, you're wired the same as I am. So you love the science aspect. I mean, look at the career you chose and who you chose to serve. You can understand with depth nervous system dysregulation, behavior challenges, and modifications. You can keep your nervous system calm in the thick of the storm that is day-to-day -day life in a therapeutic day school. And I think it's a hard time to go into those sort of fields if we don't have that scientific understanding. Because otherwise our hearts, which are awesome and useful and part of this process, but they might run us off that road, right? Instead of onto that road. And so, and then as a guy who loves talking about science, writing about science and, and doing videos about science, I just am glad that somebody's watching them, you know, and, and digs out, digs into those. Yes. Um, and 
parents out there listening, I want you to know that about this podcast, our website, pxtalks.com, I'm going to simplify it. We know that there's two sets of parents. There is one kind of, and often a marriage has one of each. Yeah. Generally, they do. Um, one is, I don't need no stick in science. Just show me a story, you know, catch me with your heart and, and I'm in. You know, you kind of have that emotional buy-in sort of person. And then you have the other person who is more of the investigator and the researcher and the facts gatherer. Um, we designed this platform to do both. I, I remember back when we were working with the original website guys, Jim and Charlie, and, and designing the website, which I know nothing about. I was just on these calls to say, here's what my vision is. Here's what my goal is to serve parents and find kids in this way. And they're like, well, what do you want out front? The stories and the testimonials or the articles and the science? And I said, both. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, no, you can only have one. Like when somebody lands on a website, you can only, they call it a hero. Yeah. You can only have one. And I was like, can we have two heroes? Mm-hmm. And so anyways, a little bit of an inroad to the parent story. Okay. So let's go to Xander yep. and um, let's go to, and I know you know this world a lot more now after investigation, after conversations with us, if we, we know the behavior challenges, we know the overwhelm, the sensory stuff was there. What about just basic health stuff and, and kind of that perfect storm case history? What was the journey to get your family started? What was pregnancy? What was labor and delivery? What was Xander like as a baby? Was there any of those perfect storm clues? There was, absolutely. And, you know, when I went to Xander's pediatrician with some concerns, um, I mean, you've seen him. He's got a very big personality. He is, like, infectious with his laugh and his smile and his energy. And I was always told, like, he's a high energy boy or he'll grow out of it um, or that's just his personality. And my first phone call with someone from PwC, like my case consult with Dr. Jonah, was the first time someone had really asked me just questions in general. Um, And when Jonah started asking deeper questions and more historical questions, it for myself even, some light bulbs started to go off of like, oh, so maybe this is all related in some way. Um, And I was always thinking through Xander's sensory challenges and behavior challenges really in isolation. But then when I had those conversations with Jonah, um, I remember being really dismissed at like maybe two and a half, three years old. Xander had these incredibly dark circles under his eyes. And the doctor was like, oh, it's genetic. Look at his dad. I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> dark <laughs> circles? Yeah. Oh, I haven't even, out of all the ones I've heard, I haven't heard that. Okay. Yes. That's... And I was like, what? Oh, okay. Stuff. And, you know, you kind of believe it, right? Because I expect someone to believe recommendations yeah, that true. I provide in a school setting about behavior and needs and a doctor's providing that recommendation um now granted i've i've learned to question things yeah. more and whatnot um but then right so in that phone call jonah started asking questions and i started to realize that there probably was a relationship between like what i was seeing xanar externalize as well as the dark circles the constipation the bad wedding um he had horrible eczema yeah. and never before did i really make the connection that they were intertwined until the right person was asking the right questions. Um, And then with that, too, he does with that perfect storm. I was induced with him. Um, He had many ear infections as a young kid with many rounds of antibiotics. Um, So there's many factors. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. So as a doc team, you know, one of us, like Dr. Jonah on the team, always does intake, has the blessing of connecting one-on-one with the doctor. And we all have our our, our framework. You know, the last thing we will ever do is is regurgitate a script to a parent. But we do need to, we do one job, which is really 1A and 1B, differently than every other doctor out there. First off, we do ask questions. We, we do take the time. And that's just what I call table stakes. But then, and, and most doctors don't take the time to do that. So you know they're never going to find the root cause because if you're not inquisitive, um, if you just accept, oh, dark circles, my goodness. If you accept everything as genetic, um, well, you're never even going to look for answers, right? You kind of right. close loop in that way. Well, once you start to ask questions, you said it there, those deeper, I love it, historical questions um, to really find the root cause. We've got to go all the way back to pregnancy and conception because the nervous system, which is where behavior challenges and the nervous system, which is where most challenges, sensory and all that sort of stuff really originate from the original building block of the nervous system, the most what are called sensitive and critical periods of neurodevelopment, they happen long before preschool. They happen long before toddler, right? And so when you start to see them rear their head to two and a half, three, four, five, when a kiddo is needing to be more calm and regulated in transitions and social and academic situations, that's where the fire
player starts to really express. But you nailed it. There's internal neurological mechanisms that have been at play for a long period of time. So parents, that's a great take home there. We talk about it all the time on this podcast. You need, if you want to find, and forget the initials, forget the kind. This one actually just goes universal to every provider. You want a provider on your team who asks the tough questions, the deep questions, the granular questions. That's how you know they care enough to find the root cause. Okay, so we had them. Xander, I'll never forget. So Dr. Jonah came in. We have our clinical rounds meeting. The intake doctor always presents the whole case history to to the rest of the docs because we're all going to take care of them. Then we have their scans. So we have their neurological stress scans um, up on the big screen back there. So even before we meet a kiddo, the whole doctor team knows everything about them, right? Which is why when we roll up and see you, you're like, how do you know so much? Well, it's the case history and it's the scans. What do you remember about now sitting across the desk from Jonah and seeing those stress scans, the thermal, the EMG, the HRV. Obviously on a podcast, um, parents, we can't show the visuals of these, but if you want to see examples of them, you can go to the website, go to YouTube. What, as a parent with an incredible professional background, what did you see, what did you understand from the scans? That will be a day that I <laughs> will always remember. Um, it was the most validated I've ever felt because my my background really was, I'm going to utilize every strategy imaginable because this is either a skill deficit that my son has or a behavioral choice. Mm. And if it's a skill deficit, I'm going to teach it away. And I did every behavior strategy possible totally. to teach him something different. And he had it, but couldn't apply it. So then I got to thinking, right? How I'm trained. Now this is a behavior choice. So I'm going to reinforce him to do something different. Our reinforcement plans didn't work. Um, When I sat down with Dr. Jonah and he explained the scans to me, it was the first time that I, I felt like there was hope that there was something that could be solved and not something that I was failing at. Mm. And I didn't, At that point, I didn't care what was to come next. I was just finding so much um, safety and knowing that there was something that we could work on. Okay. Those are my favorite moments ever to hear. Um, So I'm a little bit paused in my emotions to even know what the next question to ask because, you know, where the the truth be told, if we, you know, we used earlier, we used this roadmap and path analogy. So we'll stick with that as we flow through this incredible conversation. And so we know as chiropractors, um, that is the first milestone, we'll call it, that we are we are trained, we are ready, we are so excited to guide parents to that point of the map that says, yeah. now you're validated, now your hope is restored, now this makes sense, now you've got answers, you've got explanations, and then most importantly, parents, this is what you need to also require from your doctors. And every time, Jackie's podcast, she actually stunned me with this when I asked her, like, what do you remember from that? What was the one thing that that, we call it the report of findings, stood out to you? And she said, you had a plan. You, 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 this made sense and you guys had a plan and you're the first provider we had met that wasn't throwing darts. So parents, what Teresa is saying, you got to see those scans. Then you get the validation. Then you get excited, right? And it's kind of a funky moment if we hang there and you could probably explain this better than me with your professional, but it's like, cause it's quote unquote, bad stuff on the scans, yeah. right? There's a stressed out, dysregulated nervous system, but every report I've ever done, the more not good, and I, I can't say bad, I got it out of me one time there. Um, I'm so glasses half full, I can't say those sort of words very easily. Yeah. The more times I see a really stressed out, really struggling kiddo with a really stressed out, really struggling nervous system, I've never not presented that report of findings with unrelenting enthusiasm, confidence and excitement because we found it. Mm -hmm. We found it and we have a plan to do something about it. So once we get done with that report and show those scans, it's on us to get that taken care of, right? To get those adjustments going. So let's stay on this chronological path here, buddy. If we go the first couple of weeks, the first couple of adjustments with your beautiful boy, Xander, and we were excited, the one little inroad here, We had really strong conviction that Xander would respond faster than the average bear, even with the same challenges and same case history, the constipation, the eczema, everything he was up against was substantial, but he had you. He had, you could tell that Xander was brilliant. You could tell that Xander was cognitively um, understanding the challenges he faced and then neurologically, physiologically, not able to overcome them on his own. 
-hmm. Where I'm going with that here, my friend, is we thought he would respond fast. We were very confident that he would be a kind of lead horse in that way. Yeah. And he did. He did. And he did. So what were some of the initial responses that you saw with his physiology, neurology, with Xander day to day those first couple of weeks? So I think the first thing that we noticed that, again, when you have big picture challenges, sometimes you forget yeah. about them all, is bedtime would take us up to two hours most nights. Yeah. Um, he just could not calm down enough to even be calm enough or comfortable enough to relax and go to sleep. Um, really, like within the first two weeks of adjustments, we had 20 minute bedtimes. And that in itself <laughs> was like, he's at peace. Um, and that was a big piece for me. Like when I go back to the doctors and, you know, even family members saying he's a big personality, this is just who he is. That wasn't good enough for me because he may have a big personality, but the shame or embarrassment yeah. he felt after a meltdown is not who he is and not part of his personality, right? He shouldn't have to carry that. Um, so he became much more available to apply what I'd yeah. already been trying to teach. One of the examples that I gave um, to some of the doctors was I'd always taught him, like, small problem, small reaction, big problem, big reaction, match your reaction to the size of the problem. We weren't very successful with applying it, but driving to PwC yeah. one morning, um, he had spilt water on himself, and normally that would be like a catastrophe. One, it was unpredicted. Um, it was a mistake that he made, mm. so he internalized that, and it just felt yucky being wet. Um, and driving to PwC, he was like, Mom, I spilt water on myself. And immediately I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to turn around. I'm going to stop at Walmart. My morning is now chaos because of spilt water. And there was a pause and he said, but it's a small problem and it'll dry. And it was the first time mm. that like there was an actual connection between his ability to regulate and apply the knowledge he has. And I remember just like walking into PwC crying that morning. Yeah. Like, you guys aren't going to believe it. And that was yeah. only like three weeks into yeah. care too. What about just to just to layer it on? Because the one thing that is so telling with Xander's case is the sleep challenges, the gut challenges, the immune challenges. Those those are the three. And then the fourth one is gross and fine motor. Those are what we call the neurological soft signs. Those are the building blocks of a healthy brain. A child needs, their nervous system regulates all of these. So a dysregulated nervous system won't show up first as behavior issues and those sort of things. It'll show up as sleep, constipation, and immune challenges. But again, yeah. the Conventional pediatrician dismisses those as, oh, those are normal too. They'll grow out of those. Right. Um, did you see some change? So sleep, obviously. Sleep what about gut and immune system? Um, his eczema yeah. like almost entirely dissipated. And then the dark circles, yeah. what I had always believed to be genetic. Those genetic buggers, right. right? He, his smile obviously just like got brighter because he was more Aww. proud of himself, but he doesn't have dark circles yeah. under his eyes anymore, yeah. which is obviously now I know entirely tied to those gut challenges and... Um, what and happened? had you, I forgot to ask this before, so a little bit of a circling back, because these are the granular details that parents are living through, and you know this because you did this. Um, so you apply behavioral modification with excellence early because of your training. A lot of parents aren't going to get down that road until that teacher conference, right? And then so they're, they're, they're late to that in that world. Had you gone through um, diet changes, supplements? Had you tried to combat the gut immune eczema stuff with kind of natural holistic intervention? first so we did eliminate dairy um, which I do think at some point For sure. helped with maybe some constipation but we never saw like an actual yeah. huge change for him um, with that yeah so. okay perfect and that's I just wanted to bring that part up because it's a granular detail but in today's world I talk about this all the time on the podcast and you know when I first got into this work obviously nobody had heard about neurologically focused pediatric chiropractic right it did not have near the momentum and the reach that it has now and I feel like God has us just getting started and 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 away we go to finally be able to serve and save these kiddos and these families families. Um, but also 15 years ago, nobody knew, including me until I got the training, right? I grew up on a farm in Iowa with cattle, with corn, with Roundup and Doritos, right? So like, I nobody knew about Extra this sort of, die. yeah, totally, right? Casey's breakfast pizza and the mm -hmm. like, right? And so nobody knew about this stuff. But what is so almost, gosh, I'd almost call it double down painstaking for the 
average parent listening to a podcast like this today, they've not only exhausted conventional medicine and all the different, you know, interventions there, they probably feel like they've exhausted quote unquote natural. And I think a lot of times chiropractic gets mixed into that bucket with gluten-free, casein-free, vitamin D and supplements. And the one thing we will say 5,000 times over on this podcast is neurologically focused chiropractic. It's its own form of healthcare. It accesses a part of the nervous system and it, and it accesses a component of healing that is completely unique to itself. Now, the cool thing is when you get the nervous system better, sleeps better, yeah. poops better, skin's better, Xander's better, right? Okay, so we've been jamming on the absolutely outgoing, heart-melting, curly-haired boss man, Xander. And then there's this little bro that's just following in Big Brother's footsteps yeah. and unfortunately, neurologically, was following in Big Brother's sympathetic storm footsteps. Yeah. So tell us about Zeke. Give us what was... Um, um, pregnancy, labor, and and so far case history with Zeke. Yeah, so Zeke's um, Zeke was not induced. I was not induced to deliver him, um, and pregnancy seemed to be much better than what Xander's was. Um, circling back, Xander, I did have preeclampsia with Xander. So like again, light bulb, Zeke, I did not. So I'm going into it like I've learned totally. more things as a parent. Like Zeke's, everything's going to be different with Zeke. Um, However, very quickly, he started getting ear infections. He got his first ear infection at, like, four months yeah. old, which was very similar to Xander. Um, and they wanted antibiotics right away. They um, encouraged tubes early on. I, we did not go that route immediately. Um, and then he started crawling. Um, and he's got, like, we call him Scooter. Yeah. He, he doesn't crawl normal so to speak he scoots and is very lopsided um, which really aligns to the one ear that is consistently yeah. infected um, and then with that knowing what i know now after conversations yep. with doctors at pwc um, i learned the sequencing of gross motor and fine motor but his speech is very delayed in comparison to what xander's was and now not to say that he is delayed in speech right um but over a year old and like he hasn't said mama yet yeah. at the time of me wanting um care for him so Love. i definitely needed something to get him going and now he's getting adjusted and he is he is he's playing catch up he's healing he he's yeah he's he's clearing first his body and so here's a little recap of that from the nerdy i love that you said sequencing this is amazing <laughs> i i mean this is the goal all the time Teresa, for because it's like when I first started doing this work, it's like, okay, we can't keep this just to Crystal Lake. We can't keep this just to PwC. Yes. So I'll go train other chiropractors on all this neuroscience, the sequencing, the care plan, yes. you know, all the different stuff that we do. And then, honestly, to, this is where the podcast born out of. I was literally, gosh, I'm just going to tell the story on here, aren't I? I was mowing my lawn, okay? You if, now you know I'm a farm kid. So, like, God sends me my clearest direct downloads, or I call them action assignments, right, when I'm on the lawnmower. Don't ask me why. Maybe it's just you know, there's no Zoom meetings, there's no distractions, right? It's just this glorious time for a farm kid and a dad. You mix it all together. All right. So peace and quiet. Peace and quiet. And so this message came and it just said, it's time to teach this stuff to parents too. They're ready. Honestly, that's how that message sounded from, from above. And at first I got concerned because I really love to go granular. I really love to get nerdy. I, I love to talk about the vagus nerve and neuro developmental hierarchies and gross motor development. And then I realized what God was saying is, well, because you are a, a Iowa farm kid, you can do both. You can talk about the advanced neuroscience yeah. stuff and you can simplify it as well. And now you see it from Jonah to Steph to everybody, right? And hearing you say, like, I want to teach parents yeah. this, something that gave me a great deal of confidence as a mother when it came to Xander was being able to say, I mentioned yeah. like um, skill deficit or choice, like rather than saying he's choosing to be this way, for me to be able to say this is a byproduct of a dysregulated nervous system. And had I not been exposed to the content yep. that you shared and the amazing individuals I met, I would not have had 
the knowledge Understood. or just skill to be able to say like, nope, this is a yep. dysregulated nervous system and his behavior is a byproduct of that. And more people need to know that too. <sighs> Man, you hit the nail on the head for us as parents. That's a head thing and a heart thing because if you don't have that explanation that it is a dysregulated nervous system that went through the perfect storm and got off track, then it, it it's just naturally for parents, we're going to wear it. Mm-hmm. We're going to wear it and say, oh, it's something we're... And then you, yeah. that, that was double town on you because of your skill set and saying, well, this is what I'm trained to do. This is what I do every single day. And parents, even without the training and behavioral modification and, and that, you try that, right? You try the rewards, you try the discipline, you try the workarounds, you try the adaptations, you try the modifications, you try it all and you, you kind of continue to run into a wall. That right there in and of itself is a sign. It has yeah. to be the nervous system. It is not genetic. It is not you. It is not anything other than a dysregulated and off track nervous system and the earlier we start like for Zeke he's going to come through Xander healed very fast and Zeke's going to beat him because he's younger you know yeah. like just kind of how it is yeah and so real quick on the neuroscience um, the sequencing there that this genius wizard neuroscience expert Teresa kicked through oh I love that so much is it starts with sleep okay so the way God designed our children to develop if you think of a brand new baby what do they spend most of their day doing Sleeping. Sleeping. Eating and then pooping. So a little bit of eating, you know, just enough eating to poop and fall asleep, like when it's going great. So when they don't, when they're colicky and they don't sleep well, they don't soothe well, they don't eat well, and they don't poop well, those are signs of not just digestive distress. And it's certainly son of a gun isn't genetic. It is a sign of a nervous system that is overstressed. They don't grow out of that. They grow into gut issues, constipation, eczema. The gut and the immune are connected. So sleep is the first thing off track. The gut is the second thing off track. The immune system and respiratory system will be the third thing off track. And then you get four, six, eight, ten months old. And they're supposed to tummy time, roll over, sit up, and crawl smoothly, right? Not asymmetrically. And now you'll have the fourth sign of nervous system dysregulation is missed motor styles. Or maybe not missed or delayed altogether, but you could almost call them, like Zeke, just um, disorganized. Yeah. Not smooth, not efficient. Um, Um, And having these as a parent, you just see it and you go, something's up there, Right. right? And so when you take these basic four challenges, sleep challenges, gut challenges, immune challenges, and missed motor milestones, and you take them to the pediatrician, you get what Teresa got. The conventional pediatrician. You get, oh, don't worry. They'll grow out of it. It's genetic. It's normal. It's his person. And then it grows into, it's his personality. He's high energy. Parents, as what we're saying is, if that doesn't, if you know that doesn't land and you just feel that inside your gut that says, there's got to be something more. Well, hopefully that's how you found this podcast or another mom sent you here because there is definitely something more to that. Okay. So as we kind of round their base here and, and, and look forward, and so we've, we've gone into the granular details of your two little rock stars and your story with it. Um, what do you see now would be, and let's just go big, best case, so you're on the lawnmower. Okay. And you've okay. got your vision, you know, down in Schaumburg, I don't know how big a lawns you got to mow. So it might be a shorter time zone it's here. It's not a riding mower. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So, so we got to really be quick with your vision on, yeah. that, on that lawn. Okay, bud. Um, but if you just went big and you could have your incredible expertise and skill set and tools that you teach kids and they could get adjusted and get stress off their nervous system, how much would that change what school systems are up against right now? The overwhelm, the financial, I mean, whatever road or all roads you want to take, it, schools are like literally in the thick of this perfect storm pandemic. So let's just go real big, you know, unicorns and sunshine. Best case scenario for families, when they, if they could mix chiropractic this kind, and school improvements and modifications, what would that look like to you? I mean, it would be life-changing for all parties involved and all stakeholders. Parents would have a different kid coming home. Um, Students would be able to access their learning. They'd be able to be available to take in information. Um, Milestones and goals would be met at a much greater pace. Um, And then I think what's most important to me out of everything we talked about is 
just the way Xander carries himself is so different than what it was eight months ago. So if every child, every student had the opportunity to hold their head up a little higher and sit up a little bit straighter, because there is also this piece of shame that comes with challenging behaviors and that's removed when you are able to treat it as an actual problem not yeah. a choice right like students would be available to learn and they'd be happier and more proud of themselves as well man access availability so that's that's what we're getting at with this podcast i i will speak to this every single opportunity i get what we are driven by every single day for the zanders and the zeeks and and teresa and john's family here um worldwide is to yes step one or kind of part one of the recipe we want to see your child get through get to the other side of all the bad stuff okay constipation sleep meltdowns everything else awesome wonderful that is the goal it's not really the goal meaning i don't think you're supposed to whisper on a podcast there. I don't know how that's going to work. But the real goal is what comes after that. It is full, optimal potential met. And and you can't even call it exceeded. It looks like now when a child is thriving, and gosh, this is just real. We're going to say it. When a child is thriving, when a child is calm, when a child is regulated, when a child has a strong immune system and strong character and ability to handle small and large situations without getting overwhelmed and, and, and anxious and exhausted from it, it actually looks irregular in today's world. Do you see where I'm going with this? Absolutely. It looks like that child is an outlier. Like, oh, my goodness. Um, We've had this said to us as parents, like, you're so lucky. And I get that framework. I get that perspective because it's not seen that much anymore for a child to truly have that self-confidence, that inner calm, and that regulation ability. And you put that all together into our words, it's adaptability and resilience. That's what the world needs. And actually, because we're up against more technology and more toxicity and, and kind of just more craziness in the world, it won't last, but it's there now. We're in the thick of a storm right now. It's actually what our kids need more than anything else. They, they really need resiliency. They really need adaptability and that self-confidence. So parents out there, when you're tired and when you're struggling and you feel like you've only got one hope card left, play it with neurologically focused chiropractic because our goals, not only is our science and our clinical approach different, our actual end outcome goal is different. We're not just going with get rid of the bad stuff and then call us again when it returns. We're going for Xander and Zeke and Teresa's family living full, unbridled, untapped, you know, potential life. And then just more of that and more of that and more of that. And so as you look forward, so so take us home here, my friend. This was absolutely wonderful. You're brilliant. This is, I just love this conversation like none other. Um, Goals, projections for your family. What do you see? What's next for Zeke? What's next for Xander? What's next for you guys as a family now that you have chiropractic as this foundational component? Share it. Um, I talk to everyone about it. Um, I know Many people who are already watching this probably already know, expect miracles, experience miracles. We talk about it all the time in my family. Um, I come from a very large family. Everyone knew that Xander was emotional. Everyone knew that Xander had this high energy and it is not lost on anyone in our close knit community in our family. Um, Just right, like he looks exceptional Mm. lately and everyone's asking questions. And if I could share that gift and just be an avenue of talking more about it to more people so other people have the reinsurance that I had as a mom and then can give that gift to their children, I'm here for it. Oh, you're amazing. This is, um, I, I think as we look forward into the future, um, what you're doing in administration at that therapeutic day school and all your training is the most amazing thing ever. But the moment, we're going to put it here on the podcast, everyone, the moment you are ready to go to chiropractic school, I will write your letter of recommendation, sign it instantly. I might already have it on my hard drive, ready Perfect. to print, sign, and send, um, because that is who you are who, and collectively all you moms and, and the dads out there listening. By the way, you know, we never, not, we never don't share this on the podcast as well. You're the ones who are going to change the world. We've got our job to do within that, but you are literally the change makers. You are the impact makers. You are the message and hope dealing spread. You know, that's where it comes from. You are most effective sharing your story. You are most effective helping someone in your family, in your cul-de-sac by simply saying, hey, check out this podcast. Hey, check out this article. Hey, check out this reel or this 
you know, this yep. story that, that came out. We are so focused and committed to this. We produce every kind of content there possibly is. And so yep. you can share. So we'll leave you with this. Please share this episode right here with someone who you know needs to hear this. Someone who you see they're going to get overwhelmed easy. Someone who you, some mom who you see is trying everything to get their child to the other side of that storm and hasn't gotten them there yet please share the experience miracles podcast with them and just help us take this message far and wide because it's the voice of moms that will advocate and speak for the olivers and the zanders and the zeeks of the world and once we've seen what we've seen we are never going to shut up are we no <laughs> certainly not yeah, not at all so thanks for tuning in to another episode of the experience miracles podcast we bring you hope we bring you answers and explanations we sneak in a few dad jokes and then drug-free help as well we'll see you on the next one